Hi everyone, welcome to Hue at Home. I'm Tracy Koga. Well, what does a lockdown mean to you? And if we are in a lockdown, why are there so many people and cars out? Where is everybody going? Certainly not to small businesses. So we're going to hear from business owners and see how they're faring through this pandemic and lockdown. Plus, life coach Linda Jostowicz will give us tips on how to network online. But first, let's meet musician David Leesk. He's creating history with just one instrument. Well, well, in this day and age where we are, we all miss live music. And we're going to try and do this, well, the best we can nowadays, virtually. So I'd like to introduce a very special guest all the way from Ontario, David Leesk. And David, let's just say you are promoting probably one of my favorite instruments, and that is the guitar. And not only is this about songwriting and singing, but it's also about music. So David, take it away. Uh, tell us about your latest voyage with uh, Voyageur. Yes, uh, this is Voyageur. It's the six string nation guitar. Um, it was the brainchild of Joey Taylor um, back in 1995 after the Quebec referendum. And he wanted to put something together that allowed Canadians to have a conversation. So it's made of 64 different pieces of Canadiana, of, of, of historical and cultural pieces. And um, I happened to bump into Joey, and Joey uh, um, was doing a presentation, and I found it very inspiring. Um, and I wanted to have a crack at uh, writing some songs about the the stories behind the pieces, uh, as he told in his presentation. So he generously gave me the guitar for a couple of weeks. Um, that was four years ago, and that was the beginning of a, a long songwriting expedition for me that that um, was, it was an incredible journey in discovering uh, more stories about Canada and, I guess, how it made me feel as a, a Scotsman to discover more about this amazing country that I live in. Yes, because I know I was loving your brogue and yes, your homeland of Scotland, but we're so happy that we have you here in Canada. Uh, and I wanted to share too with everybody that there li is a little bit of a Winnipeg, Manitoba connection too in this Canadiana in voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, so there's, uh, well, there's the lucky stone of Gimli uh, that's, that's in there in the inlay in the frets, uh, probably hard to see. Uh, there's a piece from St. Michael's, um, Orthodox Ukrainian church in yeah. around the sound hall and um, this beautiful piece of wood that's on the side and the back is spelted oak from St. Boniface Museum um, so that's probably maybe the most used wood in the guitar and that's where Louis Riel uh, went to school and um, so yeah it's it's made up of some incredible pieces, uh, but these are the Manitoba pieces uh, for you right there. And of course, there's some big Canadian heroes, Wayne Gretzky, I'm told, and one of my yes. favorites, Karen Kane, although she's maybe not on the guitar herself, but... No, her tutu is in the case. It's, oh. uh, yeah, it's, it's quite prominent in the case that I don't have in front of me just now. Uh, for yourself, David, uh, what is it like for you to even play on an instrument that has definitely so much history. Not musical history, maybe, per se, but, you know, deep-rooted Canadiana history. You know, to give you an idea, Tracy, you know, when I got the opportunity to have some time with Voyager, I brought this guitar home and I didn't open the case for five days. I was, I was kind of in awe of it. And um, so, I mean, I think that speaks volumes that I, I didn't know what was going to happen with it. And uh, I also made a pact with this guitar in my head to say that whatever came out of it would become a song. So I didn't want to just sit and strum cover songs and do this, that, or the next thing. Anything that I played on it, I made sure it was a song. And that's exactly what happened. And, and I, I look upon this guitar and all the pieces inside it as a group of living stories. And uh, so I really felt like when I was writing that I had some company in the process, so it's so a wonderful <laughs> experience. Oh, wow. And there is a special song, too, right, that you've composed that uh, with other musicians, so let's talk about that. I mean, it sounds yeah. pretty incredible. 
Well, you know, I'd written five songs about individual pieces, and when it came to the last song, I wasn't quite sure what to do about it, so it became this overarching piece, really about uh, the guitar and my journey with the guitar, and it's a song called Les Chansons du Voyageur, and um, I also had the idea just like a week or so before we went into the studio to get the musicians who had played the drummer and the bass player and the lead guitar player, instead of bringing their own instruments, to actually use this as the only instrument. So the drummer, you know, was doing this for a kick drum. He played his brushes all over the guitar and the bass player played this through an octave pedal and through his bass amplifier and it turned into a bass and, and a lead guitar player put some amazing solo work on it. So mm. on the last track on the record, it, it was um, uh, all just 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 Voyager, essentially. So. Oh, and you know what? That must have been a magical moment for all of you, right? To, to be able to it play was. one. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. I mean, I think the musicians who had played on five songs already, for them, it allowed them to bond closer too because they were really... Uh, you know, honored to be on the project. So for them to actually get to play it and add their own creativity was, I think it was a cool thing for them. And through all of this, I guess we all, we've all become more creative. But for yourself, David, to continue on, I mean, we can share your story now virtually. Uh, we, you know, we're going to get to hear you play. But I guess it has been a different experience for yourself as a singer-songwriter, as a musician and a performer in all of this. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's been a journey, uh, really just writing all these songs myself and, and, you know, the sort of journey of discovery, as I say, about the country. Um, but, you know, I, I look upon what's happened as Joey Taylor, who, you know, had the idea to put this thing together, creating, you know, creating this amazing instrument and then inspiring me to uh, you know, write some songs about it. And I, I kind of look upon it as art inspiring art and I, I really hope that when people hear the record and they hear these songs and some stories about Canada that they feel connected to the guitar uh, and ultimately connected to the country they live in and to themselves and maybe maybe they'll pick up a guitar or maybe they'll pick up a paintbrush do something that's creative so it's it's a good time to be doing that I think to try and sort of go inside and um, and just express ourselves. Wow well we're so lucky to you know, to have stories like this and for people like yourself to continue on. And we just want to say, you know, thank you so much for sharing all of your creativity and we appreciate it so much. So we hope that uh, you can play us out with a song, David. Sure, I'd be happy to do that, Tracy. Yeah, okay. this is a song called Against the Grain. It's the first track on the record and it's a song written about the amazing Golden Spruce, uh, which is the top of the guitar from Haida Gawaii. Just like an iceberg deep in water, you keep your feet wet. You know that trauma, you hold the memories from sea and soil. You've seen the centuries, the bloom and spoil.
fall from grace and find darkness against the grave still letting light come in still letting light come in still letting light still Welcome back to Hugh at Home. Well, it's time to do a Skype interview with a very dear friend of mine, Ken Lozano. We all know him as Aldo Formal, Formal Wear. They're iconic in the city for the beautiful uh, suits that they make. And my goodness, I'm going to go to Ken now. Ken, you probably know like almost every groom in Winnipeg right now, correct? Yeah, uh, we've <laughs> been doing it for uh, quite a long time. So yeah, I've, I've I've created uh, a, a big clientele and uh, made a lot of relationships along the way. Yeah, no, indeed, special days, right, for people that are getting married. But you've now, well, I wouldn't say now, this has been a, a baby of yours for quite a while, but you've mm -hmm. launched your own fashion line, uh, Sartorial yeah. Funk. So first of yeah. all, let's talk about the name. It's a different name and, you know, my, my goodness, I have to think about it every time I say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so sartorial funk means uh, b basically um, uh, I was taught how to how to dress sartorial, which means um, proper, clean. Um, but I always broke the rules, so I, I, I decided to add my own funk to it. So that's where the name um, came to the idea. Uh, so I thought I'd just like share it with the whole with the whole community here. Well, and you are one not to always play by the rules you like to break them and yeah, I am that's... so happy that you have now become my fashion stylist you've taken yeah. me outside of the box so I'm going to stand up and I'm gonna let you explain the new look here for sartorial sure. funk okay go ahead sure, sure, sure. okay so the top that you're wearing today is um, inspired by like a Japanese fit uh, right now moving forward to fashion um, I've been I've been doing like more of an oversized fit, um, and then at the front, uh, I I decided to add like cargo pockets just to add some detailing. Um, now th those trousers that you're wearing right now are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, they're made out of uh, tweed uh, wool, so they're perfect for fall and winter. And if you guys notice, there's a like a four inch waistband, high waisted pant. And they're actually enclosed on the side with a side zipper and a couple clips there. So uh, just to infatuate the, the, the front side of the waistband. Um, then if you look like on the bottom, I decided to do more of a flare uh, finish to, to the pant just to kind of match the oversized fit of the shirt. So yeah, uh, this is Satorial Funk, uh, a little bit more of a, a fun formal but yet casual uh, side of me too as well, for wow. men and women. Wow. You know yeah. what though, and I have to admit, Ken, these pants yeah. are so incredible. The fabric yeah. is so beautiful too as well. And yeah. I want to say that this is a different side of you, a little bit more getting into the tailored look. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, people know me as uh, creating like suits, formal wear uh, throughout my whole career. So I, I kind of want to like, 
bring a different aspect to to the table you know what i mean so not only that it's it's nice to show like the street side um the fun side of like um my fashion right so and plus it's like totally for everyone to wear so um that's the reason why i did that oh well you know what your talent doesn't come too far from your father so how much yeah. is your dad <laughs> an influence on you oh from this day on, he's still influence in my life. You know, I'm 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 blessed that he's still working with us. Um, you know what I mean? And he he carved out my path for me. Uh, I learned so much things from him in the past uh, that really helped me in work and in, in life too as well. Uh, not only that, like I I I get to teach him some things too. So it it, it goes hand in hand, right? So we're 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 such a strong bond that that no one can stop. Well, wow. and okay, so let's get into it. 2020 yeah. probably wasn't the year that you banked on. Uh, no. You know, no, no weddings, no, no grads. How no. have you coped and, you know, made this a turnaround for you during this lockdown now that we're in again? Yeah, like, you know, this, this year it started off as a really good year for us uh, until the pandemic uh, hit, um, you know, like, um, we, we were breaking records here and a, a lot of clients came here and just, just, just to kind of inquire about our services, right? Uh, then uh, obviously COVID um, came along and kind of put everything on pause. Uh, but to be honest with you, uh, I, I think it's 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 a life lessening thing right now. Um, it, it's not just us, but it's for everyone, right? So uh, now it's a really really good time to be really nice to each other, um, no no matter what. Uh, just to kind of like you know appreciate what we have in life, right? So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that's how I've been coping with things. Um, also, uh, now that I have like a lot of time in my hands, I've been branching out to other um, resources to keep my 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 sane, I guess, like just to keep me like in check. So I've been doing a lot of like photography, um, designing a little bit more clothing, um, and you know, always keeping in touch with my family. Uh, thank God, like my family is is healthy, safe. Uh, so we're blessed for that. Um, but I, I do have a brother that works in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, he's a respiratory therapist. So um, that kind of like made me understand how serious this pandemic is because he sees and um, helps a lot of people that are going through hard times with COVID right now. So uh, my my advice to people out there is like take this pandemic serious uh, because you don't you don't want to lose like your loved ones over over this situation right now. Oh no. Yeah. And moving forward, Ken. Uh, yeah. What do you think? Can you guess? You know, will will we all go back to normal? And oh, even yeah, in your yeah. industry too, in fashion. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's so yeah. drastically changed. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We just have to be really patient right now. Um, you know, I'm I'm a big believer of like team effort. Um, man, if if we do it as a team and if everybody listens and kind of participates on the things that well all the little things uh, that we have to do uh we'll, we'll get right back there and and when when things are like up and running again it's going to be like 100 100 percent better than what it was previous years right so um but right now we just kind of have to like be patient and be really nice to each other that that's very important so my last question is what are you going to make for me next Oh, yeah, I'm okay. getting really yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll come up with something for you. Um, uh, we'll, we're we're going to have to like kind of sit down and kind of like pick your brain a little bit because I want it to be a little bit more of you, mm -hmm. but at the same time with a little bit of, of my pizzazz in it too. So, yeah, I got, you. I got you. <laughs> I know, Ken. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love you. We all love you. And thanks so uh, much for you. taking this time. And uh, we can hardly wait to what you're going to create next. Ken Lozano. Sartorial Funk, Aldo Formal Wear, you're wonderful. Love you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. And, well, don't go away because coming up next, we'll have a clip from our Hue virtual chat. We'll hear stories from Talia and Ravi and how small businesses like theirs are obviously suffering a lot. But sometimes there is a silver lining. Let's take a look. Hi, thanks for joining. Uh, so I'm gonna go right to you. Uh, let's go with Talia. You know, we we had we had a talk with you way back when, 
um, you know, and we had a wonderful summer. And then now look where we are. And tallest poppy, I mean, you're you're an icon um, on Sherbrooke. And, you know, Susie said such glowing remarks and how you really support the, the community there. So what is it now like, girl? I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? I like I, I, I almost I feel bad. I mean, I'm in the same boat, I guess, as everyone, every small restaurant owner. Um, it's it's for sure. It's really challenging. We are like I am very lucky. My staff is being just a, like amazingly supportive. I, it sounds crazy to say like I've been leaning on them so much, you know, and they've just they've really risen to it. So it's sorry. Just, oh, that's just, a dog. <laughs> Danielle, just uh, sorry about that. It's okay. Working from home, yeah. but uh, um, yeah, it's just it's it that that aspect of it, like sort of this is have has given us an opportunity, I think, like to even come together more as a as a as a team. I know that sounds a little bit cheesy, but it really it it's actually that aspect of it is has kind of been amazing of course like the business part of it is super stressful and uh, you know you never know what's going to happen from one minute to the next and that that's really hard but um in a way it's kind of it's kind of been like uh, it's it's been nice to just have an opportunity to work with the people that i uh, that i work with and just like just they they just all they've just been so great. I don't, I don't even really know what to say. Like every single day, <laughs> I'm just like, they come to me and they're like, you know, we have this big idea or like, what if we try this or whatever? And I, it's just like the, the, re, the resilience and also just like the creativity has been just like, it's just been knocking me out. So that wow. aspect of it is, is, has been kind of like a gift, you know? Well, I don't want yeah. to just always focus on like how horrible it is, you know, because then it just gets really dark. Well, so. and you just, yeah, you said that so correctly, right, Talia? I mean, it's so wonderful to hear a good story. And, you know, it is, it's exciting to be creative when you mm -hmm. can be and you got to take that moment. Um, Ravi, I, you too, I guess, very much like Talia, but uh, I'm really interested too on how you really opened your doors to a special part of our community of uh, the, you know, the abused women and, and uh, people in domestic violence uh, relationships, especially now, um, what you've done is pretty amazing. So you can share your story. Yeah. Uh, so basically my business has nobody in it, <laughs> like, like many others. And, um, you know, just listening to the news, domestic abuse is going up and up and up. And, and uh, I thought, hey, if I can be an emergency renting place for, for some people, uh, why not? And, and throughout this process, I've been learning that there's a lot of men that don't have anywhere to go. Um, because most shelters are for women or children, right? So um, that's pretty cool too. Um, so yeah, I'll take in anyone who's fleeing and uh, we'll do what we can to protect them and get them uh, into the proper resources that we can. Um, we are getting a phenomenal amount of phone calls. I'm like a helpline coordinator these days, uh, which is kind of cool um, because I don't I don't have any experience really working in that field. I do have some uh, personal experience with it and, and family members who have been in that situation. So uh, my heart goes out to that situation, and, and it's uh, it's way more um, popular than, than than it should be. And I can't believe the stories I hear. And these people are monsters, awful, awful, awful people. I can't believe the human brain is wired like this for some people, but it is. And, um, and no one should be subject to that. So if we can, if they can run here and, and uh, myself and security can help protect them uh, until the police get involved, then we're happy to do that. Wow. That's pretty amazing. And I guess now that for you, uh, both you, uh, Talia and Ravi, do you, I guess it's a loaded, a loaded gun question. Do you feel that you have been given enough support and guidance through all of this pandemic with the government or, you know, I guess the, the powers that be? Short answer, no. no I'm, like, I'm not trying to make any, uh, I'm not trying to offend anyone in government because I understand that we need to work together, but, but the short answer is no, they're not consulting with us the way they need to be. Um, uh, the new loan that comes out, we don't, according to the to the guidelines, we don't we don't uh, 
we don't pass the, the, the application process for it, right? So uh, my overhead is uh, anywhere from 70 to 100 grand a month and uh, a $5,000 grant is not gonna, you know, I think that grants and funding should be relative to cash flow. I think that makes sense. It could even be relative to uh, PST uh, remittance that we have because that, that makes sense to uh, the kind of money that we're taking in and what our expenses might be related to that. Um, just today, my, my wife went and applied for a home-based business uh, because we had to sell our hair salon and they want to charge her $677 for the application fee. And it's like, what is going on guys? Like, like can, can we get our shit together on all levels here? Um, so that's what we're trying to do. Uh, and uh, it's just you hitting your head a million times, spending more and more mo money. And it's uh, the government doesn't see that on the ground level. And I think they really need to get there. You can watch the entire Hue virtual chat on our website, and that's ilikehue.com. Coming up next, Life Coach Linda Dostowicz gives us tips on how to connect and network online. Okay, that is just my little bit of a cue to you for how to connect and network online. One of the things that we often miss when we are going to network or we are going to try and make a connection online or in person, but right now, of course, with the pandemic, everything is online. So one of the things that we miss is the energy and uh, feelings we have before we start anything. So before you sit down to uh, write an email to connect to somebody or go on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram to um, build following, to find clients, to reach out to people, is be aware of what state you are in before you get started, because that is important. If you go to write an email and you're in a headspace of, this isn't going to work, uh, you know, just feeling that overwhelm and self-doubt. And that's what's going to get conveyed in your writing and e even in the posts that you make or how you just how you show up. So I use music for myself. That was Madonna, Ray of Light, one of my all time favorite songs to get me feeling really inspired. And, you know, obviously just use whatever, uh, whatever lights you up. It can be music, it can be movement, it can be dance, it can be um, writing, it can be uh, yoga, stepping outside, anything that gets you, your, your body feeling light and feeling positive uh, is going to help you with whatever content or whatever energy you are putting out there. It's important. It, it really is. And it, uh, just try it. it. There's such a shift. You'll be surprised at that shift in your mind and in your feelings uh, about how you are going to approach whatever project you have. So um, that is my preamble to how we are networking and connecting online these days. And I like to think of it as any other kind of networking in that you are, the intention is to meet people, to introduce yourself and to make offers to help. Those are the three steps that you are going to take to create meaningful uh, relationships online. Because think about it, if you have ever thought, okay, I've made a friend on Facebook, what now? You know, I've got this friend. What now? A friend is it, that's a it's a very cold, very distant kind of uh, relationship. You've just basically friended each other. So, but that is the meeting. That's basically the handshake. Hi, and then the next step is introducing yourself. So, send somebody that you've met as a friend a direct message to say. Hi, I'm Linda. I'm a business and life coach. I see you do, uh, you sell pottery. I, I'm fascinated by this. How did you get started in that? Send them a direct message. And then, you know, have a little bit of, you know, just normal human connection. Just 
you bring your curiosity, bring your, uh, your personality, and just show up as you would be in any way making a new friend. So that's the introduction uh, part of things. So you've met somebody, you've introduced yourself, you've allowed somebody to introduce themselves to you. So you've you're already in a warm friendship there. You're already created a connection. And to take it a step further, you offer to help. You can say, hey, you know, I know somebody who uh, has a store uh, that is selling pottery right now. Would you like me to connect you to them? Or you could say, hey, I have an amazing Facebook group which I do, be the best boss of you, uh, which I'd love to have you join because it's filled with entrepreneurs who are going places and who are supporting each other. You know, you are more than welcome to be a part of this. Would you like me to send you the link? You've offered to help somebody, you've introduced yourself, and you have met somebody. Those are the foundations for creating online connections and we need connections more than ever right now we need to still feel a part of the world and that the world is a part of us so reach out don't hesitate reach out reach out to me i'd love to connect with you uh online uh, I wish it could be in person, but I'm happy to connect online. So uh, that is uh, what I would say to you about networking and connecting online right now. I want to thank all of our special guests on today's show and leave you with this question. What does lockdown really mean to you? Does that mean no air travel, no car travel, nothing? And have these lockdowns been effective? We want to know, so send us an email to hello at ilikehugh.com or you can connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at ilikehugh. But for now, stay safe and stay healthy. And we'll see you next time on Hugh at Home.